So here we are entering through this chapter. It's the last chapter before we actually build the real LFS system. And this note's worth taking note of. The commands in the remainder of this book must be performed while logged in as user root and no longer as LFS. And also, of course, to double check that LFS is set in the roots environment. So I'm going to do control D here. Just going to do echo dollar LFS and yes, it's set. So that's good. So what's going to happen here is that all these directories and the contents are going to be changed to be owned by root, no longer LFS or anything else. And the next thing we've got to do is to create some subdirectories for some temporary, uh, sorry, for some virtual file systems. Um, in the dev directory, we create two hardwired, if you like, node files. Um, for This is purely for boot up. These normally get hidden or overwritten by the UDEV when it runs, when it's creating device nodes for all the devices it finds on the system. Uh, but these two are minimal ones that are needed when booting. So first of all, we now bind a copy of the system dev into our LFS dev directory and we do likewise with PTS, dev PTS, the proc virtual file system, sys and run. And then it says in some host systems the def SHM is a symbolic link to run SHM. The run tempfs was mount, mounted above, so in case in this case only a directory needs to be created. So we just run this and if necessary it will create that link and you can or directory and as you can see it hasn't because there's no output and the V option was specified against make the so move on. And now we enter the truth environment. So what happens now is that the location where LFS is becomes the new root. So you'll see sources at the moment it's in the MNT LFS. Once we've run this command, sources will actually be on the root because the truth is actually going to be at the LFS level. So if I change into the sources, you can see it's on the root and there's all the files that we downloaded previously. Um, it does say here about the um, I have no name in the prompt and that's because uh, some of the configuration files haven't been um, created yet and we do that in the next few sections. So make some more directories on the root and then some subdirectories within within those. So again, I'm just going to run these one at a time, paste them in, check the output, make sure there's no errors. And a few links here to create. And a few additional directories with some special permissions. And just a few other tweaks to make the new system. and some configuration files, some default configuration files. So there's one for the password and one for the groups. And then they create a tester user here. Um, I don't understand why they do it in this, this way. Maybe because within true there is no add user and add group and so on. And then they rerun the login, the bash login, to get rid of that prompt. So it reads these password files. 
and groups files to get rid of that. You can see we've got name root now because it exists in the uh, password file in etc. Then a few files are touched or created and groups changed in that file and the permissions are changed and a couple of others and then we move into the first package in the last bit before we enter the actual build section so um, let's extract GCC once more change into the directory got a link to create here And then once more we build a separate, or sorry, create a separate build directory. And configure. And build this little library. Okay, that's built, so just install it now. And that's done. So go back up to directories, two levels, and remove the GCC source directory. And we move on to get text. So configure Now one thing I've just realized is that the true command that we used has not specified the make flags. So it means, I, I did wonder why the lib standard C++ library took a little bit longer than last time. And it's because there's no make flags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that. But I'm not going to do it at the moment because I've just extracted get text. So what I'm going to do is just run make instead of on its own. I'm going to actually specify minus J4 here. 
uh, to get it to build on four threads. Um, and then when I've finished installing get text, I'm going to come out the truth and re-enter it, but this time add in the make flags um, option as well. Okay, so that's built, so I'm just going to run this last command, there's no install, they just copy three programs with the looks of it, and that's done. Okay, so if we look at the variables, you'll see that the make flags is not there, so I'm going to do Control D to come out of the truth. You can see we can return to our normal uh, prompt. Now if I do set here, no, it's not set on this one, is it? Okay, what I should do is now recall the troop command and just add in here make flags equals quotes minus j4. So now, now we're back in the troop. When I run that command, obviously, if I do set, you can see we've now got make flags set. So it will mean that by default, every time I run make, unless I override it, um, it will compile on three, uh, sorry, four threads or whatever number I would have set there. So if I go back to sources, I think I got rid of the get text directory. Yes, I did. So I'll move on to Bison. And run the configure. And build it with make. And finally install the package and clean it up. And now move on to Perl. So Perl's got this one big command here to configure it with some defaults And now it's time to build the package.
Okay, so that's finished compiling. And what I need to do now is to run the make install command to install Perl. And that's done. So next one's Python. Now with this package, um, you have to bear in mind that the Python name of the package begins with a pa capital P. If you start with a lowercase p, you'll see you'll just be extracting the documentation and you won't get very far with that to compile that. So I have to remember it's uh, uppercase P for the actual Python package. Uh, there's actually a note there about it. So run the configure command. and paste the make command in to build Python That's all done, make install. And that's complete. Remember when you delete it again, it's capital P, don't go deleting or attempting to delete the uh, documentation Python archive. So the next one we've got is text info. And quite straightforward configure make install for this one. And make to build it. and install it. That's it, clean it up and move on to Util Linux. So first we've got to make a directory and then we've got this big configure command. It's done. and make install and that's complete so I'll just tidy up now and move on so that was the last of the packages for the temporary tool system um, what we do now is just tidy up a few things and remove some documentation it's unnecessary to have this round for a temporary system it's not needed really. Um, yeah, the next steps are optional. It's to be able to back up the temporary tool system, and it does need, it does mean that you could, in theory, if you break something in 
the following chapter that you could revert back to the archive that are going to create at this point. Um, I don't do it very often. Uh, well, I used to do it quite often. I don't do it very much now because I've found very little use for it. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it now. Um, but one thing that's worth pointing out is that um, when you do this, you actually come out of the truth environment and some of the virtual file systems are unmounted. So you have to remember, as it says in this box down here, to go back and remount those virtual file systems. And not only that, to remember to go into the truth environment if you do decide to do this. Um, in fact, I will do it just to demonstrate it. Come to think of it, it's probably best for demonstration. Demonstration. Um, so what we need to do here? So we need to first of all exit the truth system. So they use the command exit to do that. Control D works just as well. Unmount the dev and PTS file systems. And the reason we're doing this is because if we did the uh, backup now, we'd be backing up the contents of these virtual file systems and they're just like live bits of data that you don't need to update uh, to archive, sorry. Then we've got three strip commands to strip some extra information from binaries, debugging symbols. So just run these in, don't take long. Don't worry about the bit where it says file format not recognized. And then um, we change to the LFS directory and run this command. Now this command will run perfectly well, but it will only create or will only run on one thread and uh, one core. And if you've got several cores, um, it's quicker, obviously, if you, you are able to run across those cores. Now somebody on my channel mentioned that you can run this command with additional command to specify uh, parameters to the exec command to get it to compile uh, to compress with all four cores. I couldn't find that message unfortunately to demonstrate that and I've not looked into it myself. Um, so you can either copy and paste that command in as it is or you can type in the commands that I'm about to use which will achieve the same effect. It will just do it quicker. Um, so what you can do is um, tar minus c to compre uh, compress, compile, um, p for permissions, leave out the j, cause, uh, capital J because that specifies the format, I don't want to do that, I just want to tar the file up and then pass it into the exec command. The f is for the file, we don't need that because I'm not directing it to a file. Uh, I'm going to do V to do verbose so we can see which ones are compressing. And then it's going to be all the files in the current directory. And I want to pipe the output of tar into XZ minus Z compress um, V for verbose. E for extra compression, 9 for maximum compression, and capital T for the number of threads I want to run it on. Now, if you leave T without a number, I believe it tries to use all the threads that's available. If you want to limit it, you can put a number in after it. For example, 4 would tell it to use all four cores anyway. And then I want to redirect the output of that um, to the actual file with the with the um, archive data compressed and archived so that's that bit so I'll time this just to see how long it takes um, I won't turn the V off on both of these actually I'll turn it off on there so we'll just wait for this to run now um, it'll probably take about 10 minutes um, when that's done I can carry on 
putting the system back to how it was and carry on with the build.
Right, so that has finished compressing, so it only took about seven minutes. That would have taken a lot longer just on one core, probably about four times as long. So that means now in the root directory of the uh, host system, so bearing in mind this is a live system, if you did want to keep it, you'd probably want to copy it off somewhere. You can see there's a, the archive that we just created. And um, we can actually check it as well if you wanted to. Uh, let's go home, tar minus as it's got there, minus xpf, that directory, there, that file. Um, if I do v, we can see the files being extracted as well. And you can, as you can see there, they're being extracted. Now I won't let that continue because that's going to be going to the RAM I guess because we're in a live system it's not going onto the disk anywhere um, yeah you can see it's created the root partition there, uh, directory if there's anything in it anyway no oh there is oh there'll be the hidden files won't there so I'll just tidy these up and the user directory and what we can do now is carry on um, as mentioned before we've got to make sure we remount the virtual file system before we carry on so that means rerunning this command and these commands down here And you'll also need to rerun this command as well, just in case that's required. So that's done. And then to also rerun the true environment command as before, uh, bearing in mind, remember, I'd added in, you can actually recall it in the history, I'd added in the make flags to ensure that the parallel compiles work correctly, as you can see there. So I'll just recall that, but you could copy and paste that in again. So that's it, we're ready to carry on now with the actual proper LFS system.